You might say you're hungry enough to eat a horse, but what about a mammoth? Because it could soon become a possibility. Right now you're looking at a meatball made from the DNA of a woolly mammoth. This was created by an Australian startup called Vow. It is showing just how far lab-grown meat could take us in the years ahead. Joining me now is futurist Nicholas Badminton. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Well, I don't know. I mean, people are eating their <laughs> breakfast right now. We're talking about a mammoth meatball, like a an actual mammoth meatball. Walk us through this. Yeah, delicious. No. No. Oh, it, okay, so <laughs> it, it's predominantly made out of lamb, but the, okay. they've taken some of the DNA, they've infused it. Clearly, this is a stunt to promote like cellular protein, but it also really opens the debate about how far we can go by taking starter cells, maybe from some extinct species or, or hybridized meat, and creating something uh, delicious and new. Okay, you just said delicious, but did you see what we were showing on the screen? Would you eat this mammoth meatball? Is it edible? Well, if you think about it, humans used to kill these for food. And then that was they, a long time ago, Nicholas it, it, Badminton. Yeah, but like we've been eating pigs for a long time as well. We've been Fair. eating cows for a long period Fair. of time. But why not? I mean, this is kind of interesting. People are trying to resurrect uh, the woolly mammoth as well, or certainly hybridized versions with African elephants. Uh, the, the world's getting super weird and super interesting. <laughs> I'm here for this as a futurist. Right. And, and I, I think that we need to be open to all possibilities. OK, so let's talk about possibilities. Yeah. Does this open the way to for other prehistoric meats to become available? I don't like the T-Rex yeah. ball. I, don't, I mean, I don't know where you go with this. Does this open the door? I did a video about four years ago about, uh, and I read this book where they were they were doing some speculative fiction about you know eating T Rex steaks and whatever. I, I mean, it's a bit crass, isn't it, uh, to think about that before actually and thinking gimmicky. about and gimmicky before we actually think about you know what the value is of actually going through this process. Mm -hmm. But it is really interesting, right? But it gets even more interesting when maybe it becomes endorsements from like influencers or celebrities. Would you eat like Tom Cruise salami? Stop it. What does that mean? I don't know. Could could you? not take human cells and actually then grow meat. Oh my gosh, stop. It's Nicholas. super weird. That is weird. That's it's weird. Like and maybe maybe ethically cannibal? Ethically wrong. Yeah. It, yeah, well that's the big conversation. But if you're not too. eating someone and it's never been sentient, is it a person? This is disgusting. It is disgusting. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just to wrap but, your head around. But it's that ethical conversation as well. Yeah, sure. It's like how far do we go? Exactly. Even, you know, I, I speak to people that, that raise animals for food and uh, I do keynotes and whatever, and they're they're really, really against the whole cellular meat bioreactor based um, businesses. But these businesses are starting to get licenses down in California, oh, really? Singapore, wherever, and it's starting to go into production. By 2050, the market for protein in the world is going to be seven seven trillion dollars. Even if you take one percent of that market as as these new businesses, that's a huge amount of money and a huge market on its own. Okay, so I'm just picturing. So you walk into a restaurant yeah. and you sit down. There's your plate. The menu's there. What does the menu then look like? I mean, meat is not quite meat. It is fabricated meat. I mean, what, what are we looking at in the future? I mean, it, it's like when you have Beyond Burger or Impossible, whatever coming yeah. out. You know, plant based plant-based meat. It's the same sort of thing. You just have to get used to it. After that initial shock, and if it's delicious, no problem, we'll right? just get used to it along the way. Just get used to it. it. It becomes sucked into culture, and then that's all we eat. So if, if we can bring out the mammoth meatball with a fork and knife, you'd eat it right now? I'd eat anything. OK, can we bring that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I, I, I would. You would? Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've eaten? Oh, I spent a lot of time in China. I can't even say. Really? Yeah. OK. Good stuff? Uh. So, <laughs> all right, Nicholas Babington, <laughs> thank you. Always so fascinating to have you, you here. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.